Well, it's been a while since I last created a fragrance review video, but I'm glad to say I'm back and we're kicking things straight off with my thoughts on a 13 bottle clone fragrance haul from the perfume parlor. To find out which ones I would strongly recommend, keep watching this episode of Mags Frags. Yes, hello again everybody and thank you very much for tuning in to this latest episode of Mags Frags. It's been a while since I last made a video and I really appreciate all your concerns and your comments that you left me down in the comments section about what might or might not have happened to me etc. Uh, but I'm happy to say I'm still alive and I haven't been taken by the Grim Reaper or anything sinister like that. Uh, but I just had to pause the video creation for a while due to some new work commitments and a few other like time zaps issues uh, but enough of that boring stuff it's great to be back so let's get on with talking about my latest clone fragrance haul from the perfume parlor there's some real real bangers in this list but there's also a, a couple of them that I'm not so keen on so let's get into it and uh, let's see which ones that I like the most by the way, I just want to say, as I always do, that I'm in no way sponsored by the Perfume Pile. I'm not an employee of theirs or anything like that, and they don't pay me a penny to talk about their products in my videos. I do, however, get a little referral kickback for anyone who uses my discount code that you can find down in the description. So if you want 10% uh, off your next purchase, uh, please use my discount code and you'll save a little bit of extra cash and you'll also help me out a little bit while doing so. so everyone's a winner. So without further ado, let's crack on with the list and the first fragrance that I'm going to be talking about today is this one and it goes by the name of Flamed. It's a clone of Fan Your Flames by Nishane and the perfume parlor code on this one is 0731. The top notes in this one are coconut and rum. In the mid, we've got tonka bean and tobacco. And in the base, there's oak moss and Chinese cedar. This is a stunning, easy to wear fragrance, which is dominated by a sweet, but yet boozy coconut scent profile. I wasn't bowled over by it at first, but after a few wearings, I now absolutely love it. And I'll definitely be purchasing either a 50 ml bottle from the perfume parlor or a, a bottle of the original from Nishane when I, when I purchase one again. It's a wonderful take on the note of coconut, which unlike some coconut heavy scents, they can come off smelling like uh, sun cream or body butter. But this one goes in a very different direction with such a classy and elegant take on the note. And it's supported by a strong boozy rum note uh, that stays throughout and adds a little bit of maturity and sophistication to it. It's definitely a unisex scent, so if you're into your ultra masculine oud or patchouli notes, then this one may be just a little bit too sweet for some people. It's smooth and creamy and has a cosy kind of smell which makes it an ideal date night fragrance in the cooler months of the year. But it's also very versatile and you can wear this pretty much all year round apart from maybe in the height of summer where it may just get a little bit cloying and sweet. But overall this is a super likeable fragrance and one that I definitely recommend that you should try for yourself. In terms of performance uh, and similarity to the original etc, um, I'll say this just once and then I don't have to just keep repeating it all the way through the, the fragrance for every perfume. Um, all perfume parlor scents are uh, extremely accurate to the originals once they dry down. Um, it's only when you do a side by side comparison that you'd notice any difference at all. Anybody who uh, smells a perfume parlor clone on you when you're wearing it, they're not going to know that you're wearing a dupe, despite what any fragrance connoisseur claims in the comments section of Fragrantica, etc. Et um, however, the openings of perfume parlor fragrances can be a little bit harsh and off-putting uh, until the alcohol blast wears off, so always give them about 10 minutes to settle and dry down before judging them. I know it's a, a natural reaction to spray and go straight in and smell it, but it, it just doesn't work with these fragrances. You must let them dry and develop, otherwise you'll just get a horrible blast of alcohol and light fragrance oil. The performance is always decent, and in some cases, in some cases, I'd even say that um, they outperform the original. So definitely nothing to worry about when it comes to longevity and project, uh, projection with these. 
I also let them sit on a, a shelf and age for a few weeks when I first buy them because uh, they do get noticeably uh, better with time. If you're looking for a real beast mode uh, performer, then you might want to consider and just check out the extract sprays from the perfume parlor. These cost a few pounds more, uh, but, you, but they do contain a higher concentration of fragrance oil and they come in a, a more attractive bottle. So they, maybe that they'd be worth checking out if you're looking for something with a little bit more hum, like home from kick. The second fragrance in this list is called Luxuriant for Men 0936 and this one is a clone of Van Cleef & Arpel's Pour Homme. The top notes in this one are citruses, sage, marjoram, bergamot, caraway, basil, green notes, lavender and juniper berries. There's loads. Um, in the mid we've got spicy notes, rose, cedar, vetiver, cloves, jasmine, Oris root, patchouli, carnation, and artemisia. And in the base, there's sandalwood, oak moss, coconut, musk, amber, leather, and labdanum. The reason I bought this was simply due to the fact that it's got a five star rating on the Perfume Parlor website. I've never smelled the uh, original, so this one was just like a pretty good way of getting an idea of what it's all about because it's now being discontinued and the authentic one goes for around about £125 on eBay for a 50ml bottle size, so quite expensive now. Uh, but this 30ml uh, version from the perfume parlour was uh, only £9. So the original came out in 1978 and this perfume parlor version does have that classic masculine and intense quality about it. Similar to other fragrances from this period including the likes of Chanel Anteus and Platinum Egoist etc. Uh, but whilst this just has its own thing going on. It's very very soapy and I get a dominant Neroli type aroma from it with a hint of leather but it's just one of those fragrances that contains so many notes that it's, it's impossible to kind to pick out any individual notes. It's very, very masculine, uh, very clean, very 1970s, so it probably would be better suited to an older gent unless you're a, a younger guy looking to rock like a, a powerhouse retro scent. Okay, next up we've got Greek Island and the perfume parlor code for this one is 1950 and this is a clone of Naxos by the house of Zerzhov. The top notes in this one are lavender, lemon and bergamot. Uh, in the mid there's cashmere, honey, cinnamon, jasmine and sambac. And in the base we've got vanilla, tonka bean and tobacco leaf. Naxos often gets compared to Thierry Mugler's Pure Havan, uh, but to me they're very different. Uh, Pure Havan, I would say, is quite dense and sweet, whereas Naxos is a, is a lighter and airier fragrance with a strong presence of lavender that runs through it and gives it more of a breezy day in the Mediterranean type feel. There's still plenty of sweetness and depth from the tobacco, tonka bean and honey, uh, but to me it's more like a, a daytime version of Pure Havana, if, that's, if that kind of makes sense. Uh, but for the record, and don't kill me, uh, but I've always preferred Pure Havana to Naxos because I'm not the biggest fan of lavender uh, as a top note. But it's still a, a really first class scent and this perfume parlor version does an excellent job at replicating the original. I sprayed it on my hand about five hours ago and it's still going strong so for £9 for a 30ml bottle you can't go wrong. If you've not tried Naxos, um, it's one of the most popular fragrances from the house of Zerzhov so it's definitely uh, worth trying out for yourself and let me know down in the comments how you get along with it. Yeah, next up we've got one that goes by the name of Mystery for Men and the perfume parlor code on this one is 1634 and this is a, a clone of Enigma Pour Homme by Roger Dove. The top notes in this are black pepper, neroli and bergamot. In the mid there's cognac, tobacco, ginger and jasmine and in the base we've got benzoin, patchouli and vanilla. So this is more expensive than the others on this list, coming in at £14 for a 30ml bottle size. It's got a warm, spicy and boozy scent character with a hint of smokiness thrown into the mix. 
it's a very complex fragrance and you can actually pick out all the individual elements if you if you kind of concentrate and you know in the isolating them all but um, the overall aroma I definitely get like a coca-cola type smell from this it's very it's quite crazy because I can smell it one minute and I get the coca-cola vibe and then 10 minutes later I'll, I'll go back and, and smell and it's like tobacco dominant and then maybe 10 minutes after that I go back and it's it can be very boozy um, I've not really got any perfume parlor clones that kind of play with your senses like a real niche fragrance does uh, but this one really gives you that niche quality it's very interesting and addictive and it smells unique and expensive this is one that I would definitely recommend you try if you're fairly deep into your fragrance journey. I can't see you loving this if you've uh, only worn designer fragrances in the past, uh, but it's well worth trying out if you're uh, lucky for something a little bit different. And that goes by the name of Mystery. And again, the perfume cut parlor code on that one is 1634. Yeah, coming up next at number five, and by the way, these are in no particular order of preference. It's just how I've lined them up to talk about them, that's all. So coming at number five, we've got Zagros, a 1016, and this is a clone of Hachivat by Nishane. Uh, the top notes in this one are grapefruit, pineapple, and bergamot. In the mid, there's cedar, patchouli, and jasmine, and in the base, there's oak moss and woody notes. This opens up with sparkling citruses with pineapple being the most prominent note. As it dries down, it starts to get more woody, more earthy and a bit mossy and dirty. Um, and that sound, is that starting to sound like another fragrance? Uh, yes, the original Achivat does share some similar notes and characteristics of Creed Aventus. Uh, but it's different enough to, to own and not be a redundant purchase if you own Aventus. The Perfume Parlor version is remarkably similar to Hatchivat, uh, but I do think the performance and the blend quality is slightly better on the original than on this one. Uh, but at less than a tenth of the price, you still can't go wrong with this one. And if you want to get like just a feel of what Hatchivat is all about, then this is a great option. Uh, this is a, I would say, a very versatile fragrance, like just like Aventus is. Um, you can wear it all year round, uh, but I've got to say that I would probably still go for Creed Aventus. It's just a bit fruitier, even though um, you're likely to smell that on 20 different blokes when you're out and about or in a club or something like that. Yeah, next up, we've got one that goes by the name of French Power for Men. Uh, and the perfume parlor code on this one is 0509. And this is a clone of Dior Homme Intense. The top note in this one is lavender. Uh, in the mid, we've got iris, ambrette, musk, and pear. Uh, and in the base, there's vetiver and virginia cedar. I don't usually buy uh, designer clones uh, simply because um, like designer fragrances are so like usually reasonably priced and they're safe enough to blind buy. Uh, but I've bought two designer clones in this list. Uh, the first is this copy of Dior Homme Intense, uh, which I've owned several bottles of the original over the years and the original's one of my probably top 20 favourite scents of all time. So I thought I'd just give this one a go and just see how it compares when do it like a direct side-by-side -side comparison. It does have about, I would say, about a 90% similarity, uh, but I'd have to say the Dior is a touch smoother and it's you can, you can smell that it's slightly better blended when you compare them side by side. This does have that lovely powdery iris note um, and when it dries down it does smell luxurious, uh, but that's about after the 20-30 minute mark and by that time it's not projecting very well. Uh, so I've got to say that I will continue to buy the original over this perfume parlor clone. But again, though, this is a, a really nice fragrance in its own, just in its own right, and it's well worth the £9 that I paid for it, um, so, but it doesn't uh, match up to the DR on this one, I'm afraid. Yeah, coming in at number seven, we have got one that goes by the name of Leaf Flavour, and the perfume parlor code on this one is 0401, and this is a clone of Tom Ford's Tobacco Vanille. The top notes in this one are tobacco leaf and spicy notes. In the mid, there's tonka bean, tobacco blossom, uh, vanilla and cacao. And in the base, there's dried fruits and woody notes. 
Yeah, so this is actually the cheapest one in this list. I mean, this is a 50 milliliter bottle size, but a 30 milliliter in this one is only eight pounds, which I think is super cheap. Um, and I've got to say that out of every fragrance I own from the perfume parlor, this one has got the beast performance about it. It really is a, a good performer and you get constant wash from it all night long and it just never seems to fade. It's a, a rich dark tobacco scent that has a large dose of uh, sweet creamy vanilla and a touch of dried through up top it's a very sexy and addictive fragrance that works best on like a night out in the cooler months of the year i would say this is a, a serious scent for a powerful and serious man that kind of goes about his business and, and means business uh, but again this is one that grew on me over time um, it, it wasn't a love at first sniff it didn't wow me instantly so this is another one that you probably I, i'd highly recommend it now but you're going to have to dedicate a few wearings to, to probably appreciate it as much as i've got i've learned to Okay, next up, we have got one that goes by the name of Robe, and the perfume parlor code on this one is 1636, and this is a clone of Kaftan uh, from the YSL Private Blend. The top notes in this one, uh, we've got pink pepper, uh, tangerine and bergamot. In the mid, there's styrax, benzoin and olibanum, and in the base, there's labdanum and musk. For those of you who are familiar with the channel, you'll know how much I absolutely love Caban and Tuxedo from the YSL Private Blend. Kaftan has always been one of those fragrances that kind of sits on the border of whether to pull the trigger on it or not. So I thought I'd get this uh, per uh, perfume parlor version just to see how I'd go with it for a few full wearings. This is a mild ambery scent with like a strong presence of resinous benzoin and styrax which produces a waxy like plasticine type aroma. It's slightly smoky, slightly sweet but everything is, is very mild and gentle in this one. It's very pleasant and comforting smell and it's not one that I kind of reach for for say like a night out. It's more of a classy daytime office scent or one where you're just kind of heading out for uh, just a meal at a quiet restaurant um, it just kind of it just whispers like elegance rather than shouting for attention it's very interesting uh, but it still sits behind caban and tuxedo for me but it is a very very nice fragrance and i would i highly recommend you give it a try Next up, we have Thunderstorm for Men. Um, and the perfume parlor code on this one is 1992. And this one is a clone of Orage by Louis Vuitton. The top notes in this are bergamot and grapefruit. In the mid, there's iris and pepper. And in the base, there's patchouli, vetiver and musk. So let me start by saying uh, the original of this is going to set you back around about £250 for a, a 100ml bottle size, so very, very expensive. And I paid £9 for this 30ml perfume parlor copper. This is a green and earthy fragrance with uh, patchouli and vetiver being the major players in this one. It's light, fresh and versatile and very easy to wear during the warmer months of the year. Uh, there's some sparkling citruses in the opening, uh, but this, this is kind of short-lived. And for the main part, you're going to get like a, a Bond number no. 9 Bleecker Street or a Diptyque Tempo kind of smell. It's very green and earthy. Um, if you, if, I don't know if you've experienced any of those since I'm going off on a tangent here. Uh, but it's just one of those that you just wear casually during the day. It, it'd also uh, make for a really nice office or work scent. And it's suitable for, I would say, anyone of any age. It's a very, very nice nice simple fragrance uh, but I certainly wouldn't be paying £250 for the original. So number 10 on this list we've got Aroma of Timber for men it's called and the perfume parlor code on this one is 0558 and this is a clone of Creed's uh, Spice and Wood. The top notes in this are bergamot, Amalfi lemon and green apple. In the mid, we've got angelica, rose, clove, peppers, patchouli, and birch. And the base notes in this one are Virginia cedar, iris, oak moss, and musk. 
Yeah, I wanted to try some uh, different fragrances by the House of Creed, other than the likes of Aventus, your Green Irish Tweed and Silver Mountain Water, etc. So I picked up this clone of Spice and Wood, and I have to say, I'm pleasantly surprised by it. You get a, a fresh and tangy green apple early on, uh, but then it just does what the name suggests. You get a deep, rich woodiness from the birch and the cedar, and this is supported by black pepper and clove, which give it a really lovely spicy kick. There's nothing too complex in here. It literally smells uh, just like aged wood, uh, but I really like it, and I'd say it's well worth trying it out for yourself. Very underrated, and it just does what it says on the tin kind of thing. You know, it's, you get a lot of wood and a lot of spice. So give it a go. Um, Aroma of Timber 0558. Okay, at number 11, we've got Penultimate Letter 2. Um, and the perfume parlor code on this one is 2037. And this is a copy of the brand new, well, not brand new, but the latest uh, YSL Y Le Parfum. Uh, the top notes in this one are grapefruit, ginger, aldehydes, and apple. In the mid, there's geranium, lavender, and sage. And in the base, there's patchouli, olibanum, cedar, and tonka bean. So yeah, this is my second designer clone in this haul, and it's uh, an interpretation of the latest one in the Y lineup of fragrances from YSL. Um, it's called La Parfum, uh, which was released early in, in the year, so it kind of proves that Perfume Parlor don't mess around when it comes to creating their uh, smell alikes. Uh, this one is a mass appealing, ultra versatile blue fragrance, uh, but this particular version has a slightly more grown up feel to it than the versions that went before it. It's a, a touch more dry and peppery, uh, than the other flankers but it still retains the perfect level of sweetness and this copy does a really great job at like replicating the DNA of the, the Le Parfum version. It's uh, kind of up to you whether you want to buy a clone of this when the original is only around about £70 for a 100ml bottle uh, but I got it just to kind of test them side by side and I'm really impressed with it. I think the Y line of fragrances have a, a very distinct and unique quality and they're right up there for me um, in the mass appealing blue designer uh, fragrance battle. So yep, if you want to try this one, give it a go and uh, I'm sure that you'll, you'll like it. There's nothing to dislike in this one. Yeah, so we've got two more to go and this next one is called Cars and the perfume parlor code on this one is 1646 and this is the third one from the house of Nishane um, and this one is called Annie. The top notes in this one are green notes, pink pepper, bergamot and ginger. In the mid there's Turkish rose, cardamom and black currant and in the base there's musk, ambergris, patchouli, cedar, benzoin, sandalwood and vanilla. Yet after watching loads of rave reviews when the original of this was first released back in 2019, I headed off to Selfridges in Manchester to kind of see what all the fuss was about. And I have to say, I was totally underwhelmed by it at first. Um, there was just something in there uh, that smelt a little bit funky and animalic, and I just didn't get along with it whatsoever. I could smell this kind of fruity tartness of the blackcurrant and uh, a sweet, uh, like creamy vanilla. But the best way to describe it would be like eating a lovely homemade blackcurrant pie and custard maybe out of a smelly old sock. There was just something in there that was in the base that was just putting me off and I just didn't enjoy it. But now with a little bit of experience, it was probably the amber green, the patchouli and the musk, like a triple threat that was uh, doing damage to my designer uh, senses back in the day. Uh, but roll on a couple of years and uh, a more mature nose now. I thought I'd give it a, a try again a few weeks ago. And I have to say, it was much better than I remembered it to be. So dare I say it, I even enjoyed it. So I thought I'd give this perfume parlor clone a go, uh, give it a few more wearings. And I have to say now, it has really grown on me. This is definitely like a slow burner uh, and not something that you're going to love at first sniff. Well, maybe you will, but I didn't. Uh, it's sweet without being too sweet uh, and the tangy blackcurrant really jumps out in the heart of the fragrance. Uh, 
I'd say probably Fan Your Flames is my favourite out of the Nishanes that I've tried so far. Uh, but I can see why this gets a lot of love from the community. And it's definitely one that I, I, you must try for yourself and, and persist with it because it is a, a great fragrance. And finally, coming in at number 13, we have got Astray Fruit. 1947 and this is a clone of tom ford's lost cherry the top notes in this one are bitter almond sour cherry uh, in the mid we've got plum jasmine sandback turkish rose and sour cherry and in the base there's vanilla patchouli cloves benzoin cedar vetiver sandalwood tonka bean and peru balsam yes yeah, so for those of you who like to indulge in the sweeter things in life this is like an ultra syrupy sweet gourmand fragrance uh, that has been described as smelling like a cherry bakewell well um, or a, a cherry compote but one thing is for sure though the cherry is the star of the show in this fragrance and the perfume parlor version does a great job of like replicating the tom ford version I would say uh, that this one is one of those occasions where the clone version outperforms the original in terms of longevity. The original only lasts about, I would say, an hour before it's barely noticeable, whereas you'll get two or three hours out of this one. This one isn't for everyone, and I would say it probably leans uh, heavily towards uh, the feminine side. Uh, but if you do enjoy this one, then I would say the best version of this, uh, I've come across this one, is one from Genre Parfums, and it's called Black Cherry, and it smells much better than Tom Ford original, and lasts all day. It's, uh, it, it's, a, it's an absolutely brilliant one. So I'll put this one here, it is. Where have I, got, where have I put it now here? Yeah, this one here, uh, Genre Parfums. So check those out on uh, Facebook. It's a, a Facebook only site um, and they're based in America, but that one is by far, look at the color of the juice in that one. But that one's the bar, fa by far the best uh, Tom Ford um, um, Lost Cherry clone I've I've come across. In fact, I'd say this is this is much better than, than any one that I've tested before. In fact, I'm gonna have a little spray of that. beautiful yes yeah, so in summary my favorite fragrance from this particular haul would be flamed 0731 which is the fan your flames copy from nishane and i would definitely put this one in my top 20 perfume parlor clones of all time uh, that i've tested so far um, i really enjoy this one but this is not one that you would enjoy if you're not a fan of the coconut note because it's very very strong in this one if you want a really beast mode perf uh, performer then i would suggest picking up um, leaf flavor which is the tobacco vanille clone and if you want a high-end niche then i would try maybe the mystery uh, that's 1634 which is the clone of enigma from roger parfums or the cars which is the nishani anicope the rest are all nice in their own right uh, but these four i would say stand out amongst the rest of them don't forget if you're planning on trying any of these for yourself or purchasing anything from the perfume parlor please feel free to use my discount uh, discount code down in the description and get yourself an extra 10 percent off your next order so thank you once again for tuning in and i hope you've made it through to the end of the video it's uh, great to be back talking about fragrances again uh, and I, I hope you've enjoyed me waffling on for the past 20 minutes half an hour or so if you have enjoyed it please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel uh, that way you won't miss any more of my riveting and informative content yeah right um, so until next time everybody thank you once again very much for your support stay safe keep smelling fresh and i'll see you very soon for another one bye bye for now